All right, Sedge, I see you got some hand planes out. I know we got a whole mess of them in the shop. What's going on here? Well, recently people have been asking, out when I'm out and about or online, uh, what are your top five hand plane picks? And I thought we'd do a quick video on it. Let's do it. So every shop, I believe, needs a good set of hand planes, block and bench planes. These are the top five that I pick, and I'll call them out. We'll go a little more in depth, but not too in depth on each one. A number seven for jointing, a number five called a jack plane. I use a number four and a half, but a number four is my number one hand plane that I have. I have an adjustable uh, throat block plane, and this one lives in my apron when I'm building. So the number seven is the first one I'll talk about. You're going to see how much longer the sole of the plane is. You have a lot of forward sole and then a lot of length here. In other words, I'm going to compare it to my four and a half here. And what you have is a short sole. So if I'm planing or jointing a longer board, what happens is if I have a small sole, it will follow undulations, while this will ferret across the entire length. So the next choice is a number five. I refurbish this one, I get different totes. It's an old Stanley, number five. Uh, you're gonna notice it's a little bit longer in the sole than uh, a number four or four and a half and it falls in between a seven and a four and that's why it's called the jack plane i've always w understood that as the jack of all trades so i also on here i don't know if you could see it probably not i got a slight camber to there to the blade That was good. <laughs> All right, Sedge. <laughs> this is a beefy one. Why this one? Okay, so this is a four and a half. Okay. Emphasis, it's wider here than a normal four. It's beefy. And I bought this, and you'll see on all the YouTube videos, they'll call this a smoother. Oh, okay, and I'll show you what for. Okay. So why a smoother? Um, to smooth? I'm just kidding. Um, I do like the beefiness of this. This is my number one bench plate. Yes, I do small pieces and I joint with it. But the reason I got this is I have a board here and then you know I may have some witness marks on it. There may be some, um, taking it off the thickness planer, there may be some slight undulations in there and I don't want to hit it with sandpaper right away because I'm still working it. So what I'll do, and it's really neat when you use this, is it actually takes the undulations out of the board. And you're gonna see, I'm just getting these little short curls. The reasoning for that is I'm just hitting the highs on the boards. Okay, always make sure you have, and you'll see right here, look, it was high here. See, when it's shiny, and now it's the dull parts are the undulations, and this is why this is my go-to plane. I can get these boards dead flat the way I want them, and you're gonna see how that fluff just comes up. I got this tuned just right, and it's that quick. So Big D, how's that feel? Wicked smooth. Oh, smoother. <laughs> okay, Sage. What about a block plane? Okay, so you're gonna notice the angle of it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot lower angle than a typical bench plane. Okay. okay. So it's to trim end grain, uh, put chamfers on stuff. I use it like this. A lot of times I know this is long grain, but I'll take it like this and I'll knock the edge off. Feel how sharp that is. Okay. Now feel that. And what I'll do is I'll just take it again and I use block planes all the time just to knock the edges off. Oh. But what I also like about this is just let's just say this is the bottom of a table leg. And I think I, I don't know if I taught you this yet, but I'm going to take this and this is a really nice 60 and a half and I'm going to take it and the more you push the throat closer, the more you're supporting it. So when I'm trimming uh, some end grain, I'll hold it like this and you're going to see where I can chamfer that 
with not a lot of uh, tear out, we call that spelching. Mm -hmm. And you'll see how I can get a consistent bevel on that end grain. And this is what I use this one, and you'll feel, hold that, yeah. and you'll feel my other block plane, which I have kicking around here. Okay, this is an old uh, duct, this is all ductile iron. And you'll feel this is out of aluminum. Oh. And the big difference, yes, this has the adjustable mouth, but this has the weight to carry it through a cut. Sure. So I've always had an apron plane, and I've tried a variety of different ones. When I say an apron plane, it fits right in my pouch right here. It's always on me, well, the majority of the time. And this is really nice, it's all aluminum. But you have the adjustable throat. So I'm building something really quick. I can do my quick knockoffs just like this, okay, but, in a previous video, we were showing how to use the dominoes and the different tenons. And sometimes when you're dry fitting, not sometimes, all the time when you're dry fitting, uh, these can get really tight in the tightest of settings. So I use it like this to knock this edge off and it's really quick. So I use this all the time when I'm working with the domino joiner. So that's my top five picks for status for a shop. Uh, we will go in more depth, probably on each one over this year, but more so, um, we're gonna be doing a top five specialty planes as well. Nice. So, did that make sense and help you in your first choices? Immensely. Too cool. So as we always say in the Sedge Tool Shop, be positive and stay sharp. Oh, wicked sharp. <laughs>